Family Theater presents Gene Crane and Gene Lockhart. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Gene Lockhart in The Woman's Touch. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Jean Crane. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world, Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. This is supposed to be a man's world, but heaven help the middle-aged widower with two married daughters and an interested neighbor lady. Though said widower has long since reached the age of consent and dissent, his feminine relations and friends flutter about him like anxious hens round a single chick. Such a man is Homer Poe. <laughs> and such a man has decided to do something about it. Family Theater presents Gene Lockhart in The Woman's Touch. Now listen, daughter. I'm free, white, and 51. I can keep my house. I can cook my dinners. I've made my bed, and now, doggone it, let me lie in it. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, Dad, I won't bother you any longer. Thank you. <coughs> Yoo-hoo! It's Flossie Sowers, Poe. Are you home? Of course I'm home. The doors are open, aren't they? Huh? Wouldn't leave my doors unlocked if I weren't home, would I? Well, I saw Annie leave by the front door, Poe, so I came in the back. Thought she must be home. I saw her so flushed. You have a fight with her, Poe? Ah, look at this house. Oh, looks nice and neat to me. Yeah, that's just the trouble. I no sooner get things fixed the way I like them than one of my daughters has to come in and change everything around. Why can't they leave me alone? Oh, it's just that they want to take good care of you, Poe. Uh, oh, my. Look at that nice blue vase up there by the clock. But it's lost there. I'll just take it and put it on the bookcase. No! Leave that vase alone. Oh, you almost made me drop it. I almost made you drop it. You women. <laughs> You're all alike. Why can't you let my blue vase be? Why can't you let me be? You who died. Ah, oh, there's Ed. Why did I have to have girls? Why didn't I have sons? Sons that went out and worked all day and let their poor dad alone. Oh, what are you grumbling about now, Dad? Hello there, Mrs. Sowers. Well, hello, Edna. Thought I'd stop by with a nice plate of salad for you, Dad. Here you are. Yeah. <laughs> salad. Vitamins. Anna's been here, I see. Always put your vase in the bookcase. It's wasted there. I'll put it on the whatnot shelf. Yeah, you see, Mrs. Sowers? You see? Oh, now, Poe, don't go getting yourself all excited. Remember your blood pressure. Yeah, blood pressure. Well, none of us are getting any younger. Are you calling me old? Well, no, oh, well, but... What in the world is the matter with you today, Father? Oh, nothing. Now, things the matter with me. I just want to be left alone, that's all. Well, really? And that goes for you too, Kitty. I'm as young as I ever was, do you hear? And as good as I ever was. My only trouble is I've got too many women. Too many women trying to take care of me. I can see I'm in the way. Well, don't bother to wash the salad plate, Father. I'll, I'll pick it up tomorrow morning. Mm, wash the plate. I'll... Goodbye. I'll... Goodbye. Oh, now it's a real nice salad, Poe. Molded gelatin. Molded indigestion. Why, even the cat won't touch it if it... Ah, the cat. <laughs> yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Poe, what are you going to do to that animal? I'm just going to feed it a nice salad. Here you are, kitty. Eat hearty. Poe, it's having a fit. That does it. I'm going to get away from all this. I'm going to take a trip. A trip alone? Yes, you bet it's alone. I'm going to shoot the works. I'll show them that Poe's an old man. I'm going to... I'm going to Chicago. Chicago? A no. woman. <laughs> uh, 
Are these the shiniest patent leather shoes you have in the store? Why, yes, Mr. Poe. Uh, are they for yourself? You fit them to my feet, didn't you? Oh, yes, Then but... wrap them up. This is the usual style hat you buy, Mr. Poe. Yes, but I'm changing my style, Mr. Carberry. Now, give me something sportier. Sportier? You? Have you got any objections? Oh, oh no, no, Mr. Poe. But what did you have in mind? There. That derby there. I'll take that. The derby? Yes, the derby. <laughs> Why, it's Mr. Poe in person. Uh, hello, Bill. Well, I want to turn my car in. Think I've gotten my wear out of it, don't you? Mm, I'd say so, yes. Let's see, that's a 37, isn't it? Ah, uh, 38. Mm-hmm. Of course, I can't give you much on it, Mr. Poe, but on the other hand, your new car won't be out of line price-wise either. You want the most conservative model, of course. How much is that red convertible in the display window? The red convertible? It's for sale, isn't it? Oh, of course, but... That's uh... the one I want. Come on, now, let's get it over with. Now, i just let those dishes drip and I'll take a look over at Pose to see if he's all right. Good heavens! What's the fire chief's car doing in Poe's driveway? Oh, I must call the girls to get over here right away. Oh, my goodness, let's get this telephone started. Oh, dear. Why doesn't she hurry? The operator, get me Elm 6851 and hurry. Oh, dear, the chiefs get nervous. The fire must be getting worse. Hello, Anna. This is Mrs. Sowers. Oh, yes, I'm fine, thanks. It's your father. Your father. His house is burning down and... Yet... No, no, i got to hang up now. There's somebody at the door. Probably the fire chief. Come right over. Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. Good morning, Flossie. Poe. Mind if I come in? Huh? A honk for you. Wanted to show you something. A few things I wanted to tell you before I leave, too, like, like feeding the cat while I'm gone. Leave? But, 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 but your house. What about my house? It's on fire. The fire chief's car's in your driveway. Fire oh. <laughs> Poe, are you going out of your head? <laughs> no, Flossie. For the first time in a long time, I've come to my senses. Why, that red convertible out there, that's mine. Yours? That's right. And look. Huh? Take a, take a look at my duds, huh? Derby hat? <laughs> look down here. Patent leather shoes. <laughs> oh, Poe, I just can't believe it's you. Well, it's me, all right. And I'm off for Chicago. All packed. Leaving right now. Now, you just take care of the cat, like I said, and... Oh, yes. Tell Edna and Annie where I am. Edna and Annie... Uh, uh, good heavens. Now what? I phoned them your house was on fire. They'll be here any minute. Holy cats, I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, wait, Poe, no, wait. Wait for what? My daughters and the fire department? I'm leaving while I can. Oh, well... As long as you're so set on going to Chicago, here's an address I wrote down for you in uh, case you get lonesome. Uh, Miss Hannah Strong, another woman. She's real nice, Paul. That's why I'm going to Chicago, to get away from women. You tell that to Annie and Edna. But, but what did I tell the fire department? That's your problem, Flossie. You started that fire in my house. Now let's see how you can put it out. <laughs> Chicago, hub of the Middle West, metropolis of... Hey! Why don't you look where you're going, yokel? Yokel? Now, now you listen to me, you... Uh, unfriendly guy. Traffic's thick, though. Yeah, I have it. I'll go for a walk along the shores of famous Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan, ah, it's beautiful, father of waters, or, or was it the mother? Ah, inhale this fresh air, right off the lake. Ah. <coughs> all right, buddy, all right, move along now before you catch your death of damage. Oh, <laughs> I'm all right, officer, I'm just out for a little air. Air, is it? 
That stuff's bad for you, Pop. Pop? Get along now, no loiter, and I'll have to run you in. Run me in? What for? Now, you wouldn't want me to worry about you, would you? We want to take care of our tour, so go along to your hotel now, Pop, where you'll be warm and safe. Pop. Uh, taxes to be raised again. Yeah, Russia walks out. <laughs> I never thought Chicago would be like this. Funny. Seems the bigger a city is, the lonesomer you can get. Uh, me? Lonesome? Why, why, that's the reason I left Logansport, to get away from people, especially women. I've only been in Chicago three days, and, and I'm lonesome. Say, what, what was that address Flossie gave me? That Miss Hannah Strong. She's probably an old battle axe, but tonight, well, any old port in a storm. Maybe, maybe she isn't home. Yes? Uh, is uh, Miss Hannah Strong in? I am Miss Strong. You? Is it that bad? Oh, uh, no, ma'am. I, I, I mean, uh, Mrs. Sowers gave me your address. You're a friend of Flossie's. I'm Homer Poe. Why, come right in. Thank you, kindly. Give me your hat and overcoat and go right in and sit down while I hang them up. Thank you. Flossie wrote me all about you, Mr. Poe. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Flossie wasn't at all sure that, that you would call on me, but she hoped you would. And so did I. Well, well, that's mighty nice of you, Miss Strong. I, I wish I'd called sooner. When did you arrive in Chicago? Three days ago. Oh. Oh, well, I think you did pretty well in calling me as soon as you did, Mr. Bow. Miss Strong, you'd be surprised how lonesome a man can get in three days in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did Flossie tell you why I left Logansport? Well, not exactly. No, I'll bet she didn't. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sorry I didn't phone you before barging in like this. Nonsense. It was a most delightful surprise. Um, uh, you didn't have another date? No. To tell the truth, Mr. Poe, I'm not too interested in you men. You're not? No. Does that surprise you? Well, I, well, I thought all women were interested in men in one way or another, either to be taken care of or, or to take care of them. <laughs> no, I've managed to get along without them pretty well. Oh, of course I have my friends. Hmm. But I don't take the masculine sex too seriously. Makes life much simpler. Well, you, you, you are different. And you like it? You bet I do. Miss Strong? Uh, <laughs> Hannah? Oh. <laughs> if there's one thing I like better than anything else, it's independence. And it's wonderful to find it in a woman. Well... You know, we're a lot alike, you and me. Are we? Absolutely. And I think we ought to do something about it. Celebrate, huh? What do you say? You show me the, show me the town tonight. Huh? Why, Mr. Poe, I'd love it. Now, that's what I like. No shilly-shallying. I like a woman who knows her own mind. <laughs> hey? <laughs> Divine. <laughs> what do I, Hannah? And you said you couldn't room, but... Well, I couldn't until you taught me how. And from now on? Well, from now on, it, it's a... It's Viva Everything! <laughs> Ah, uh, that was a wonderful dinner, Hannah. I'm glad you liked it. 
Shall we have our coffee in the front room? Fine, fine. Uh, here, let me carry the tray for you. Oh, well, thank you. You know, you certainly make a fella feel right at home. Oh, I'll move the ashtrays out of the way. Uh, no, I'll help. There we are. Didn't drop a thing either. Why should you? Oh, if I'd been home back in Logansport, that is, and if I'd offered to carry anything like that tray, my girls would have bet that I would have dumped the whole thing on the carpet. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine you doing anything like that. You're so sure of yourself. Uh. Homer. Um. Uh. Uh. <laughs> If I am, then you've made me that way, Hannah. I? Oh, here's your coffee, Homer. Thanks. Yep. Yep, you. You do everything the easy way. Oh. And still, you accomplish a lot. And you take it for granted that I can do things the same way. Well, can't you? Well, sure I can, if I'm let alone. Sugar and cream. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Sugar and cream. Thanks. <laughs> oh, you know, Hannah, I just can't thank you enough for making my month in Chicago so fine. I've enjoyed it, too. I'll miss you, Homer. <laughs> but you've got other friends. Oh, I didn't give you much chance to see them lately. Oh, they won't mind. They're very understanding. Yes. Oh, anybody could tell you're a happy woman. Well, what a dear thing to say. Well, it's the truth. Why, it shows. It shows in your eyes and your, your, your ways. Oh. Everything about you. Or even in this flat. This is a happy place. It's been my home for a good many years now. Do you, do you think you could be happy anywhere else? Anywhere else? Mm. Well, I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. I've always lived in Chicago ever since leaving Kentucky. I like it. Why should I leave? <laughs> well, I, I've got a, I've got a goon business back in Logansport, Hannah. I have to live there. Homer. Hannah, will you marry me? Huh? Will you marry me? I guess I'm not much to look at. I'm no spring chicken, but... Well, Hannah, honey, why well, you're crying? Yes. Did I, did I say the wrong thing? Oh, no. But I was so afraid you wouldn't say the right thing before you left. Chicago. Oh, Hannah. Oh, honey. <laughs> That's right, operator. I want to talk to Mrs. Flossy Sowers in Logan's Park. The number's Elm 627. You did, Poe. Well, of all things. I mean, congratulations. The girl... Oh, yes. I'll break it to them gently. Well, this looks like a party. What's it all about, Flossie? You sounded so mysterious over the phone. Oh, well, I didn't mean to be Annie. I just thought it'd be nice for us to have a little uh, get-together at your dad's house. Dad. It's about Dad. You've heard from him. Well, yes, I have, Edna. You've heard from Dad. Now, Annie, don't get excited. But there's been an accident. Oh, I knew it. We never should have let him go off to Chicago alone. We should have followed him and brought him back. No, 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 you're wrong. He's not dead. Oh, Flossie, don't tell us Girls, that. Girls, will you let me get a word in edgeways? Tell us. Tell us the worst. Poe is... Uh, Poe got married. Married? married. <laughs> now, girls, if you'll just let me go on. Oh, so I'll sorry. tell you about it. Poe went to Chicago. Poe went to Chicago. Poe went to Chicago. Poe went to Chicago. Girls! Girls! Now, land sakes. You think the end of come of the world just because your dad got lonesome and married a perfectly nice woman. Nice? In Chicago? Logansport isn't the only place that's got nice people. How could dad do such a thing to us? He was lonesome. He had us. We took good care of it. Too good. 
Can't you girls get it in your head that your father wanted a partner for the rest of his years? Now, Edna, you're 26, and Annie, you're 29. You're both old enough to know that. You both got husbands. Why begrudge your dad a wife? Well, it, it isn't decent of him to marry again. He's forgotten mother. <laughs> oh, nonsense. When a widower marries again, it shows his first marriage must have been a mighty happy one. Nobody will ever take your mother's place with him. Not even Hannah, sweet as she is. Hannah. Your stepmother. Oh. <laughs> ah, Hannah Strong, I've known her for years. She's a fine, sensible girl. Girl? How old is she? Oh, I'd say Hannah was 40. An old maid. A maiden lady. And a mighty pretty one. She's had her share of bows, the pick of them in. But she had to wait till Dad came along. I still think you were behind this whole thing, Flossie. This, uh, this woman is your friend. And you let Dad go to Chicago. Oh, no, you listen here, Annie, and you too, Edna. I didn't have anything to do with the marriage. It was entirely your Dad's idea. But that horrible red car. I didn't know he was getting that car. And I tried to talk him out of going away alone. But that's the way he wanted it. And I reckon he's old enough to know his own mind. Oh, not when it comes to women. Especially when it comes to women. I'll admit I gave him Hannah's address in case he needed a friend. A friend. A fine friend. <laughs> oh, you'd better make the best of things because they're arriving home today, my girls. Huh? Your dad and Hannah any minute. That's oh. why I invited you over. Well... <laughs> Oh, with my hair looking this way. I'd have worn my Sunday dress. Oh, not that she'd make any difference. I'd do it for poor Dad's sake, marrying a woman like that. He'll need all the family backing he can get. I hope you'll pardon. I knocked, but no one answered, and Poe said to go right on you. Hannah! Floss, mm. <laughs> darling. Oh, dear. I can't tell you how happy I am for you, dear. And Poe's a lucky man to get you. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, now... <laughs> Well, I, I know you'll want to meet Poe's girls. Indeed I do. Poe's done nothing but talk about Edna and Anna. He loves you very much, you know. <clears throat> uh, I'm Edna, Mrs. Uh, uh, Hannah. Welcome home. Thank you, Edna. And uh, I'm Anna. You're the one that threw the pace pot on the school door because you didn't like your arithmetic teacher, huh? Well, <laughs> well, well, well. This, this is a mighty fine welcome home. Dad, congratulations. Oh, hey, there you are. Tug up me like that since you were in your teens. Oh. <laughs> well, girls, what do you think of her? Isn't she a sweetheart? Oh, she certainly is. Oh, I'm so glad we made you go to Chicago. <laughs> You made him. <coughs> yes, uh, you, you girls always took fine care of your old dad. And I want you to come over just as often as before. This is still your home, you know. Well, well, that's awfully nice of you, Hannah. Oh, now, this is no way to celebrate a wedding, folks. I got a big party ready for you. Oh, that's oh, what I do. I do. <laughs> Thanks, Flossie. Thanks for breaking the news to the girls. You sure did a swell job. Oh, I didn't do anything, Poet, unless it was the opposite. Why, what do you mean? They were carrying on something terrible when Hannah walked in. She heard it, too. But did she get mad? Uh, no. In one minute's time, she wrapped them right around her little finger. <laughs> I tell you, Flossie, <laughs> Hannah's one in a million. And if it hadn't been for you, I never would have met her. Well, as long as I couldn't marry you myself, I couldn't think of anyone sweeter than Hannah. <laughs> I hope you'll be very happy together, Poe. Oh, I know that. Now, let's get over to the All girls. Right. Oh, I think everything looks just lovely, girls. Oh, I know I'm going to be very happy here in a ready-made home. A real home built by love. Understand? Bless your heart, Hannah. They, um, there's just one thing, though. Huh? Oh, I know it's silly, <laughs> but it makes me feel really at home. So I'd had a hand in kind of sort of arranging things. What's that, Hannah? This blue vase. What? It's so very beautiful. If no one minds, I'd like to put it right over here. Oh, no. No, not that. Oh. 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 Your beautiful blue vase. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 I wrote it. What's funny about that? <laughs> that vase 
vase, honey. But you loved it, Paul. You <laughs> sure, told me. Yes, yeah, sure I did. But that vase has been a bone of contention for years. No woman could leave it alone, not even you. <laughs> oh, Paul. Ah, uh, come here, honey. Don't you worry about that vase. I'm glad it's broken. Oh, it's so sweet of you to feel that way. But that settles it. What? What do you mean, Hannah? I'm not going to touch another thing. I want the girls to do exactly as they did before. What? Oh, no! <laughs> You know, each week, Family Theater receives many letters attesting to the power of prayer. Rarely ever do we read excerpts from these letters. But this week, we are reading a few lines of a letter we received from one of our listeners because, well, the letter speaks for itself. I was in the hospital last week when I heard your program for the first time. I had my first baby at the same hospital where my husband was taken three weeks before with polio. I heard your plea for prayers and also heard you tell of someone who said he didn't know how to pray and, and that he didn't believe prayer helped. And then you read a poem on prayer and answer. That poem brought tears to my eyes because it was so true. God answers prayer. I know because my husband wasn't expected to live, but we prayed and he did. There's only God to call on when even the doctors give up. Would you please read that poem again and... If it isn't too much trouble, send me a copy. My husband is 20 and I'm 17, and we have a little baby now. With God's help and our faith in our prayers to him, we'll work together till my husband walks again. Keep telling the people to pray. God answers prayer. Yes, God answers prayer. That's why Family Theater encourages you each week to pray, to pray together as a family, because... The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Jean Lockhart in The Woman's Touch with Jean Crane as your hostess. Others in our cast were Lorene Tuttle, Verna Felton, Eve McVeigh, Alice Backus, Hal Aronin, Jim Nusser, and Bill Barron. The Woman's Touch was written by Dorothy and David Welker, with music composed by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by J.F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Maureen O'Hara, McDonald Carey, Pedro de Cordoba, and Jean Ruth in The Lost Mine of the Padres. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.